I know that you all these days have a lot of rice and a lot of beans in your kitchen. Today, I'm gonna to talk about a way to get rid of some of it. Uh, we're gonna work on a dish called kachari. It's spelled K-I-T-C-H-A-R-I. And it, it, it means blending of mung beans and basmati rice. We couldn't get any mung beans because I guess they're being rationed, but there seems to be a big shortage of them. These days, it's easier to get heroin than mung beans. Um, and uh, let's see, and, it, uh, the, and it's a very old Ayurvedic dish. The, there are literary references that go back thousands and thousands of years. And the great thing about this dish is its potential for variety. You can still maintain the Ayurvedic integrity of it and yet play with it and, and you know, expand it or contract it as the case may be. Uh, one of the other great things about it is that uh, it stores well and, and uh, it's really easy to heat up. It's also very, very easy to make. So these are the ingredients. We'll start with that. These are the ingredients. And this is two carrots chopped up, an onion chopped up, uh, two tablespoons of fresh ginger, red lentils, because that's all my connection had, two cups of brown rice. No, just one. Uh, excuse me, one <laughs> cup of brown rice, take three. Uh, a half a teaspoon of cumin, uh, half a teaspoon, uh, uh, excuse me, a teaspoon of curry, a teaspoon of turmeric, good for anti-inflammatory issues, teaspoon of salt, a uh, teaspoon of mustard seeds. Okay, and handy dandy rice maker. This could be made in the pot, um, but uh, I like this because I just can close it and that's it. Now, Jill or somebody classy like that would take all these ingredients and gently saute them and have the flavors come out and stuff. But me, no, I'm not doing that. This is what we're doing. We're doing that because we're gonna keep it simple. Um, and actually, I wonder how many guys would actually be able to tell the difference, but this is great. Boop, boop. That, one boom, 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 red lentils. That, that. Curry, cumin. Teaspoon of salt, the mustards. There's a story about that <laughs> Ginger, fresh ginger. Let's get this out of here like that, okay. If I wasn't on camera, I would have done it with my fingers, but <laughs> try to maintain a little bit of decorum. And then, six cups of water from the well. Okay. You do that. Stir it up. This is the great part. <laughs> yes. Even, you know, it's Mary had a little lamb because it's indicative that even a baby could make this. <laughs> it's so easy. So we're going to let this cook and um, I'll show you what it looks like in an hour. We're back. We're back. So here we go. Which is the open? No? Where's the button? In the oh. middle on the top. Oh! <laughs> it hasn't been the same since the accident when my mother dropped me on my head a few times. Anyway, this is it. So we're ready to rock and roll. Now, one of the things, another one of the things I, I like about this is uh, aside from the fact that it's easy to make, it's really inexpensive. Uh, and also, you notice that the, uh, I want you to note that when, if you change from lentils to mung beans or brown rice to quinoa, all the cooking time, those cooking times change. So be aware of that. Anyway, also, you come home, maybe you had a challenging day at work, a hard day on the prayer rug, maybe you had one of those particularly difficult medicine journeys. After that, you want something that'll soothe you and be very calming, and this has that effect. I really love this stuff. And I've been eating it for quite a while and I don't get tired of it. So there we go there. And I also like to dress it up with a little cilantro. And go wild with a little avocado.
There it is. And that's it. It's as simple as that. It's really hot, but I assure you it's really good. Oh well, I'll just taste it so they can see I'm not kidding. Hmm. I love this stuff. Okay, well, hope you enjoyed that. See you on campus. Arrivederci.